Welcome to CSET Biology TCP. I am Mr. Wilson and today we are going to be looking at the May June 2016 Biology Paper 1. We are preparing for our exams that come up in short order and I do hope that we are practicing as much as we can. Let's look at question number one. Which of the following feature is used to classify a group of organisms as class insect? Now, please be reminded that an insect would have body divided into three parts, head, thorax, and abdomen. So size would not be applicable. Shape would not be applicable. The color, neither would that be applicable. So the most suitable answer for this question is going to be D. Question number two. Eleanor collected 13 snails in a 25 centimeter by 25 centimeter quadrant. What is the density of the snail population in a one meter square area? Now, here we are working with two different units. We are working with centimeter and meter. So it's either we're going to be changing centimeter to meters or meter to centimeter. I chose to change centimeter to meter, and that would have given us a uh, 0.0625 and then we're going to be doing that division with the 13 remember to find the density it's pretty much finding the average so our answer using that formula would have been 208 for further details on this particular question you can look at our quadrant lab which is of course on the channel so C is our answer for question number two we move on to question number three. Living organisms such as plants are affected by abiotic factors which determine where they become established. Which of the following option describes some of these determining factors? So we're looking at abiotic factor. A uh, has some abiotic factor there, B biotic factors, C and D, they are somewhat outlier. Yes, they have impact on the environment, but we're looking at biotic and abiotic factor. Our most suitable answer here would have been A. And we move on to question number four. Question number four looks at a food web. A food web is usually a number of food chains. Usually it begins with a autotrophic organism. Here we are required to identify the trophic level, that is trophic level 1, uh, which organism pretty much represents trophic level 1. So if we look here, we are seeing phytoplankton, which are somewhat microscopic plants, they are usually found in water, and zooplankton, those are of course microscopic animals, they too are found in water. So if we remember trophic level 1, that's where we're going to find the producer. So the autotrophic organism here, phytoplankton, is definitely going to be our answer for question number 4. And we move on to question number 5 as we prepare for our external exams. And of course, I'm sure that we're studying. Item number 5 refers to the following diagram of a mushroom. Now a mushroom would belong to the kingdom uh, fungi and we are asked the organism shown above is what it is really. Is it a producer? Is it a consumer? Is it detritivore or decomposer? Now two things here are pretty close, detritivore and a decomposer. Detritivore refers to things like earthworm, wood lice, the larger organisms. But you would have recall as we prepared for the paper to we made mention that bacteria and fungi are referred to as decomposer. So a fungi here would of course be captured as a decomposer. And we move on to question number six. Question number six looks at uh, symbiosis. It refers to the following option, A, parasitism, B, commensalism, C, mutualism, and D, synergism. Uh, for item six to seven, match each item with one of the option above. 
for six the relationship between a wild pine that's a pine a pine looking thing that grows on a plant or on the light wire you might see it sometime it doesn't have the fruit on it as a regular fruit that we know as pine and flamboyant here just meaning a tree you could just look at a tree a beautiful tree right so this type of a relationship of course is going to be a commensal relationship because the one organism will of course benefit while the other will not be armed neither will it be gaining anything from the interaction for seven the type of relationship between leguminous plants and nitrogen fixing bacteria this is straight from your textbook of course this is going to be mutualism as the bacteria would have had somewhere to live and of course uh, the nitrogen fixing relationship the plant there would have benefited from so we're going to move on to question number eight a uh, pretty interesting question uh, a flow diagram uh, somewhat represents a uh, loss of energy so item eight refers to the following diagram which shows energy flow through an ecosystem so it's pretty much showing the energy flow and the energy actually came from the sun the producer would have been able to convert that doing photosynthesis into chemical form which is of course passed along the, the food chain from one organism to another but we have to observe here that organisms are losing heat and this heat is as a result of respiration so it says energy flow is not 100 percent efficient because energy is a recycled from plants to the atmosphere uh, lost through respiration and excretion C uh, circular moving in and out of organism and of course we have the linear moving from one organism to the next now what will the answer be uh, will it be A how are we losing this energy all right so the energy here is a loss as a result of respiration and excretion that's going to be our answer uh, most days of a week we move on to question number nine and question number nine is already answered for us this must be very easy for you which of the following is not an example of renewable source of energy a renewable source of energy of course renewable sources of energy would have looked at things like wind solar geothermal uh, biomass hydroelectricity all those are what we refer to as the renewable sources of energy when they are used they are not easily uh, depleted but non-renewable source like oil fossil fuel is pretty much easily depleted so of course oil is not a source of it's not pretty much an example of renewable energy and we move on to question number 10 question number 10 which of the following practices does not help to conserve the environment let's look at what's happening here we have crop rotation crop rotation is good because it helps to maintain that nutrient in the soil uh, re reforestation uh, reforestation uh, pretty much looking at planting trees that would of course help with uh, maintaining and conserving the environment and of course using natural fertilizer humus from our compost that of course would contribute significantly to the environment however overgrazing where animals are eating too much from the field leaving the soil bare that could of course expose the soil to the elements of weather causing erosion and other ills so of course A is going to be our answer for question number 10 we're moving down to question number 11 which you might find pretty fascinating uh, human activity would have a least immediate impact on is it coral bleaching oh no we have a, a lot of impact on that one could say eutrophication aging of water and a nutrient uh, that is a major problem especially with uh, chem industrial chemicals agriculture chemical the pollution of the water there we learned of the mississippi the end of the mississippi what is happening there and then we have overpopulation you know we have to continue to use these bird contraceptive as we continue to try to keep that balance with population that we can feed everyone so here our answer would have been of course D, the formation of fossil fuel which would have taken a, I mean a pretty long time on the high temperature 
temperature and the pressure we would be getting fossil fuels so of course d is going to be our answer for question number 11 and we move on to question number 12 which of the following effects of climate change poses the greatest threat to small island and this is pretty interesting uh, so we have here rising sea level ocean acidification uh, increase in greenhouse gases increase in global temperature uh, rise in sea level as we are looking at small islands are uh, being flooded as the atmospheric uh, temperature continue to change and of course ice caps are melting and of course be changing in weather, weather pattern with the El Nino, La Nina effect that type of a thing we are expecting that this could have the greatest effect um, ocean acidification is also a real thing but I think I would choose for now the rise in sea level lower lining area might just become flooded let's move on to question number 13 question number 13 the greatest threat to the survival of coral reefs are let's look at a coral reef uh, a decrease in nitrogen level decrease in greenhouse gases increase in ocean temperature increase dissolve oxygen level here we are going with C as the increase in temperature is of course going to be causing coral bleaching and when we have coral bleaching you understand that the zoos and tele will of course give up that relationship between the coral and itself and of course the coral will of course perish so I think that's a greatest threat now we are going with C we move on to question number 14 what will question 14 be uh, I'm, I'm sure you are pretty much waiting on question number 14 phase 4 of a graph of population growth is most likely due to it is most likely due to we have disease resistance oh no with disease resistance the population wouldn't be falling high natural birth rate no the population wouldn't be falling adequate uh, food and space no the it wouldn't be falling so naturally with competition and invasive species that would of course affect our population and could of course cause the uh, size of your population to significantly reduce you know invasive species are species that really don't belong to an area like the lionfish as it were in Jamaica the Australian crayfish uh, the Perinavidus isis all those are things that we could look at as being invasive and we're at question number 15 question number 15 reads a mature plant cell is different from a mature animal cell because a plant cell has uh, this should be a nice one for most person mitochondria both would have mitochondria cell membrane both would have cell membrane large permanent vacuole uh, for C D a nucleus suspended in the cytoplasm so our answer here would most definitely be large permanent vacuole because that is pretty much uh, consistent with a plant cell and not an animal cell. Animal cells tend to have smaller vacuoles but not a large permanent vacuole. So we move on to question number 16 and this is a nice question. We continue to emphasize that students know the difference between the mitochondria and the chloroplast. So item 16 refers to the following diagrams. You can see one and two. Which of the following options most likely identifies the organelle I and II above? All right, let's look at this. Is it the nucleus and chloroplast? What can we say? We can say that, well, one is the chloroplast. Uh, mitochondria and the nucleus? No, we can't say any is, of course, the nucleus. So we know that one is the mitochondria. So now that we know that one is the mitochondria and we know that one is the chloroplast, we can safely say that 16 is of course going to be C. 
great so we move on now to item 17 and this is pretty much in the form of a table you would have done a lot of practice with table back in your SBA where you looked at the food test so for item 17 which of the following organelle is correctly match to the function let's look at the ribosome side of protein synthesis mitochondria air space in the cell mitochondria is pretty much that site for cellular respiration uh, nucleus uh, controls the movement of uh, no nucleus control pretty much a lot of things uh, vacuole the site of energy no so of course our answer here is going to be a for 17 all right, great. So we move on to question number 18. Uh, in comparison between osmosis and the diffusion, which of the following statements is not true? All right, so we're looking at not true. Pay attention to that. Osmosis occurs in living cells. That's true, all right? Uh, both processes require energy to move particles across a concentration concentration gradient this is something that we would have seen with active transport diffusion sometimes requires a partially permeable membrane of course the cell membrane well i don't know about require but the cell cell has a membrane and we have the fusion um, taking place there and then we have with both process molecules move from high concentration to an area of low concentration so the best answer here uh, is of course going to be B item 19 refers to the following diagram which represents a metabolic process carried out in plants now this is a question that would have been repeated several times uh, for those persons who have been following the past paper now we're looking at water light carbon dioxide plant chlorophyll chloroplasts, oxygen given off and food it suggests that we're talking about photosynthesis our answer here the food produced is uh, is it fat no not really starch protein amino acid we're gonna go with B starch great so we move on now to question number 20 and we are moving down the line pretty quickly if you ask me uh, question 20 to me is pretty interesting I can't remember having seen this particular question this seems to be a new question if you ask me uh, and for me I think it is a little troublesome I don't know if it is uh, based on a drawing or uh, I, I don't know uh, I think I, I don't know I don't know let us look at it anyhow uh, Item 20 refers to the following diagram showing the cross-section of a dicotyledonous leaf. Alright, so there we have two similar uh, palisade mesophyll and the epidermal layer there, a cuticle one might say. And then we have the vascular bundle. That, that's it, three there, the vascular bundle that would have of course contained both xylem and phloem vessel. Now we're supposed to look at the now, which of the following statement about the label parts are true? All right, so we know that one will allow maximum light to penetrate through uh, the transparent cell. Yes, we know that one is true. All right, uh, allow for transpiration via spongy mesophyll. Hmm. Three, allows for gaseous exchange via spongy mesophyll uh, this is a really tricky question for me i must admit it's one of those questions that i'll call out on the entire team to answer but i think i would go with uh one and three i'm gonna go with one and three tell me what what's your answer in the chat respectfully that is tell me what's your answer in the chat Oh wow, what's happening here? Nope. Great, so we are going with B. But tell me what's your answer 
It's a pretty interesting question if you ask me. I I think I would need help with that one. I listen to what you have to say. I'm guided by you. All right, item 21 refers to the following diagram and it looks at rate of photosynthesis and there we're seeing carbon dioxide and some limiting factor there. So we're looking at light intensity and how that affects the rate of photosynthesis and let us see what happens. Which of the following statement best accounts for the shape of a graph? Great. Let's look at this one. So A, photosynthesis rate increases. All right, photos as photosynthesis rate increase, there is a decrease in carbon dioxide. No, that is not true. If carbon dioxide was decreasing, it would be coming down this way. All right, B. As light intensity increases, the rate of photosynthesis also increases until a stationary until a stationary phase exists. When denaturization, a denat yeah, denaturation, denaturation, denaturation of the enzyme occurs. Interesting. This is definitely not the answer. Uh, let us look at C and D. Uh, as light intensity increases, there is an increase in photosynthesis until there is no further increase in the rate due to some limiting factor. And if you look at carbon dioxide there, this seems to be the plausible answer here. As carbon dioxide level gradually increases, there is a similar increase in the rate of photosynthesis until a plateau has uh, exists where no further increase in carbon dioxide result in any oh, well, well, uh, this is a, a little off I am going with uh, C and we continue to remind students that it's very important that when we watch these videos we follow up by checking the comments below the video so as to make sure that if there's anything that is out usually the correction is made in the comment below the video and all are of course expected to give your feedback uh, respectfully as this is a family community and we don't want to be abusive uh, to anyone or that type of thing we want it to be a uh, family friendly inviting so to speak item 22 refers to the following diagram of a tooth all right uh, so we're looking at the crown there at one and two there would have been more like a dentine and then we have pulp and blood vessel. Let us see what is required of us. Which option correctly identifies the structure labeled one, two, three, and four? Crown, enamel, hmm. uh, dentine for three, no. Pulp for four, no. Enamel, crown, root, nerves, no. Uh, enamel, uh, dentine, pulp cavity, of course, blood vessels, capillaries. I'd go with uh, C, but we could continue looking at D. But for me, it's going to be C. We move on to item 23. And item 23, which of the following conditions are optimum for the action of salivary amylase? Now, salivary amylase is one of those uh, uh, enzymes. I would adhere to say those because enzymes are actually chemical. That is actually found in the mouth. The pH of the mouth is somewhere between 7 and 8, somewhat neutral there. Some might say 6.9 going up somewhere neutral there. And what we know that in the body, the temperature is ab optimum temperature is about 37 degrees Celsius. So if we are going to look at the, the, the temperature uh, or pH that this enzyme will act, it's going to be the closest thing to 37. And if we look here, A, no, it's out. That's the acidic environment. So that can't be. Uh, C is straight alkaline wonderful there 
if we look at the temperature it is out and out by far so of course our answer here is going to be B alright so that's going to be our answer for 23 so we move on to 24 oh wow well. alright 24 refers to the following diagram uh, let's look at the diagram uh, fats and oil at the top. Let's look at the picture, little picture graph here, pyramid. All right, which two food groups should a person suffering from hypertension and diabetes limits? All right, two food groups that they should limit. Uh, if you look at this carefully, we have a lot of starch. Uh, in four, we have uh, some vegetable and fruits in three and we are having uh, some sweets and uh, all right so person should limit I think that oh well I think that the person should of course oh what's happening here so be there for me again you can tell me in the chat if that's what you selected remember we're working this paper together all right so 25 uh, which of the following can be ingested to prevent osteomalacia or rickets so osteomalacia for older person rickets for your younger persons and of course we're looking at calcium for a b vitamin a night blindness c uh, bleeding at the gums, curvy, that type of thing, and magnesium there. So the most appropriate answer here for me is going to be A. Alright, so we move right along. We move on to question number 26. Which of the following options correctly matches the gaseous exchange structure? with the organism gaseous exchange structure with the organism all right a human trachea that's not the gaseous exchange surface for humans so we could look at b and c as a start as these are the gaseous that's pretty much a gaseous exchange for human and if we up on over to the plant we definitely have to go to uh, larger leaves because plants usually have larger leaves as the young leaves young leaves are not out every day so that is sort of something to help us guide us if we didn't know much about the fish so we're going to choose B here as the answer you could have used method of elimination just use what you know and then the rest would fall right in place 27 the role of respiration is best described as the of course this is going to be a textbook is it the release of energy, absorption of oxygen, breakdown of carbohydrates, liberation of carbon dioxide? Of course, your answer here is going to be A. So we move on into item 28. Uh, which of the following uh, best, which of the following best identify? some of the transport substance in animals all right so things that are transported in animal let's look at that now what's that mean here all right great so we have amino acid that is the smallest part of protein now we have hormone that we are pretty much uh, our chemical messenger they move from place uh, to cause the body to change uh, it's, it's the nicest thing to say we have adrenaline and so many other hormones and then we have sucrose hmm sucrose that is like cane sugar but we use sugar as glucose so and then we have the respiratory gases carbon dioxide and of course oxygen so i would eliminate three so my answer here would have been one two and four making it D as my choice for this particular question. I will move on down to the heart which is 29 and it refers to the following diagram of the human heart and it is nicely labeled at 1 with the aorta 
and two there being the pulmonary artery then we have the pulmonary vein and then we're going to be having the bicuspid valve or mitral valve now this is going to be pretty much straight from the textbook so if you remember the textbook you should be fine here and then we're going to our last question for part one of this paper which is of course going to be question 30 and it looks at the amoeba obtaining all the oxygen it needs by diffusion uh, via its cell membrane while human needs to have a special respiratory surface for this purpose uh, the best reason for this difference is uh, interesting now this question is looking at surface area to volume ratio uh, this is something would if you're doing uh, circulation would have been the first part of your uh, text it's a question that is usually on most bio paper multiple choice paper so you want to get used to it the answer for it from text it's actually D I don't even need to look at the others but usually this this question appears so often on the paper it is sort of not so easy for you not to know what the answer there is so it takes us to the end of part one of this paper part two will of course be linked to the paper in the comment uh, or you see it in the comment or at the end of the video so you want to follow and make sure that you can get the second portion of this paper that's from item 31 to 60 thanks much for watching please be reminded to like share and of course subscribe when you subscribe hit that notification bell because we continue to have our marathon so when you hit that notification bell and select all you will know when is our next marathon continue being good remember to leave us a comment